Hello everyone and welcome back to Total Warhammer 2. I'm Lord Forent and according to the most recent poll I ran on my channel, we are again doing another Total Warhammer 2 series. And this time we're doing it as Bretonia. Uh, we have of course the four choices between the Lords of Bretonia. We have the Duke of Ford Lido. I have no idea how to say this. Uh, we have the... I'll just go by the names. We have the Duke, we have the Lady, uh, the face sorceress, and then we have Raponce down here. I decided we'd go with Luan Leon Coeur, who's up top. Um, this faction is basically medieval oh, France. So, um, before I started, I did a fair amount of diplomacy, so you guys didn't have to watch all that. Um, basically, got non aggression pact with some of the Bretonians, got a trade agreement, agreement with two of the High Elves, and got military access through the Reichland. So. Uh, Luan is the king of all Bretonia, so he's got some really cool stuff. He's first off got all his questing vows, or all his vows done. Um, he's also got some very nice bonuses. If we fight undead, greenskins, or chaos, the troops do a lot more damage, and they take, and they are less likely to rout. He also has the blessing of the lady, which is physical resistance. Um, it's constant unless he runs away, which is really strong, and he can get some crazy magic and missile resistance. He is definitely one of the strongest um, fighting lords in the game to some degree. I mean, he could be stronger, but he's really good at what he does. He also starts on a horse, which is unusual. So let's add, oops, let's add this lady to army. So this army right here is frustrating to fight. So Bretonnus starts off a fight at war with, I think, the most factions in the game. They start off at war with four. Um, Greenskins here, Marienburg here, and then Norka up here, or the Norse, Norska factions. So, let's try and get this one. If I can do this right... Uh, okay, did I do that right? Yes, I slowed it down. So if I can do a backspace pause while in range of this guy, we can succeed in what I wanted to do. There we go. Now if we attack him... He won't be able to run away. Oh, he can't run away, so I messed that up. Um, see, I can win this battle, but then I'm likely to die to this guy, which is the problem. So, I think I'll fight this battle. Then. Let's do that up. Um, yes, we're going to actually fight this one. So, battle in the first episode. I just don't want to lose a lot of my troops, basically. So, for those of you who don't know the game, which I suspect is a lot of you, Bretonia plays sort of like what medieval France stereotypically does. A lot of knights, um, and that's about it. <laughs> Bretonia is I'm pretty sure the cavalry version in terms of they probably got some of the best cavalry in the game. Um, they have terrible, terrible infantry units. If you look at these, they're called expendable. These are peasant units. They have half decent leadership. Not really that good. Their combat stats are terrible, and but the best part is they can die, and our knights don't care one ounce that they're dead. So let's do a bit of a hill position. If they're green skins, they'll probably charge. Um, we've got to remember we can't really hold out against a charge. We've kind of got to charge first, and that's going to be a consistent theme for this whole game. So we've got Lewin. We also have two flying. Pegasus Knights. And these things are pretty good. They're armored shield, they're anti-large, and they're very fast. We're going to be using those. And we have uh, two Knights of the Realm. Pretty good shot cavalry. We're going to put them in a lance formation. In a group as well. And basically, he, them and Lewin, Lewin and them, are going to charge. So let's put this, these flying knights over here. We'll have Lewin and these guys here. We've got the catapults in range. Uh, what spells does this lady have? She just has a buff spell. That's not so good. She's only level one though. Okay, here we go. Let's see what crazy chaos we can create. So, Bretonia's approach is usually what's called ha hammer and anvil. Um, yeah, it's basically called hammer and anvil. Basically, you let the enemy break themselves on your infantry, and then you smash them from behind with your cavalry. So, I am going to do this, order that attack. These guys are moving over here. Lewin, we may at some point just charge right to kill their enemy lord. Otherwise, he's going to be a problem. 
Uh, don't actually worry about that anymore. Look at those guys. So these Pegasus Knights, they're flying, so they are semi-vulnerable to missiles. That tends to be the way to kill them, but they're armored and shielded. Um, assuming their shields <clears throat> are actually facing their targets. Um, oh, they're actually killing my cavalry. There we go. They are, in fact, shattered. So now we can order these Pegasites to Pegasus Knights to attack those guys, those guys, and we're going to send Lewin forward a bit. Shift the formation of these regiments to there. And we probably won. It's not really that hard, obviously, because it's a starting battle. But uh, Lewin is also really good. Let's send Lewin in. Um, have these guys focus on other people, actually. I'm not worried about the crossbowmen being able to kill the Pegasus Knights. It's almost impossible to kill Pegasus Knights when it's just a ranged regiment. So, um, those guys are broken. Yes, that's a spearman we're going to charge into, but that's how it goes. We're going to buff Lewin. Also, we're going to do that in case somehow he's got magic. He's already damaged this guy severely, so that's a good position to be in. Yes, we did just charge into a rank of spearmen. However, they're getting destroyed, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, we gonna win here. Yep, army loses. So let's just clean up their army. We don't want any of them to get away if we can help it. Uh, we're never gonna catch them, but whatever. Luckily, Bretonia does very well on cleanup because of the cavalry units. Like they do extraordinarily well. We got 80 some odd kills on those, 90 some odd on these two. Lewin even got 12 himself, and then our catapults did quite a bit. So if you watched my um, High Elf Heralds of Ariel, you'll notice that we have much more many more units this time in our regiments. So that's because I'm on my new computer, and this will be solely done on the computer, new computer, so it can handle the larger unit sizes. So you get to see much more impressive cavalry charges. Why will you not finish hunting this guy down, Lewin? Lewin keeps disengaging from the battle. It's really weird. Like, he'll do like one or two attacks, and then he'll stop. There we go. That should basically be it. They've just got a handful of units left. Yeah, we'll end it there. Basically, we just wiped out their army. We took no casualties, so that was a perfectly executed starting battle. Probably during the turn processing time, when the AI is going, they will probably the Greenskin army will attack us, so we'll probably have a second battle. Um, okay, so the other mechanic of Bretonia is chivalry. Basically, do you behave honorably? If you do, you can get bonuses and a really super powerful summon. If you don't, you can get penalties, and in order to win, I have to get 2,000 um, chivalry to win this game. So if we do something like Ransom, we lose chivalry. Uh, we can execute them freely, or we can offer redemption and recruit them because they're human. Uh, we're going to execute them. Not very honorable, um, but that's just the easiest way to do it. Um, we're going to do Route Marcher, obviously best starting one. And we're going to give her that optability. Now, Marienburg has... has a half-decent garrison. Don't know if we're going to be able to take that with our starting army. We're probably going to need another army. But it would be worth trying, wouldn't it? Um, let's move to here. Speed up my movement speed again, because I turned it down. And here is the Bretonian tech tree. So over here, you've got improved stuff for cavalry. Down here, you got industry. Up here, you've just got general improvement. A little bit of farms in here. I'll go over farms. Down here, you've got your decrees. Basically, kills your relations with the people, but it gives you chivalry and makes you immune to stuff. So, for example, this one makes me immune to barren wasteland attrition, which is really good. Um, specifically, stuff like the, um, where is it? Ruinous Power Decree, 50% reduced casualties suffered from Chaos Territory. 
makes it really good for Britonia, one of the best factions to invade the Norca Scandinavian region. They're very good at it. Um, in fact, if you play as these guys, getting invaded by Lumen is pretty much one of the most common things you'll see. So, Corone is a unique settlement, so we will up that. Now we have a choice to make about the economy. So, Bretonia is what's called a peasant economy. We can sustain 10 peasants. If we go over that, we have penalties. And if we're below it, we get upkeep reduction. Now, there's two economies in Bretonia, one better than the other. You have your farms, which generate at their starting level 300 per turn, which is really good. And as you go up, you can get up to 600 plus 50, so you can get up to about 900 on their income build. However, you'll notice it says income from industry might negative 100. That is because there is the second tree, which is your industry tree. The industry generates far less. It generates about 600 rather than 900. However, it's not affected by a peasant economy. But it does remove the ability to get income from farms as well. So, um... It's kind of a holdout. These storehouse ones make defending relatively easy. It makes it much better. Um, but we're going to go with the peasant economy for our starting settlement. We'll just have to juggle income for. So if you wonder about the economy, how do we get around that? Well, the knight units, actual knight units, are uh, do not count towards that. So we'll definitely be working towards that. Uh, we have stables here. Um, we don't actually have any on our settlement yet. This first level, mounted yokemen and archers count as peasant units. Everything above this, knights, errants, questing knights, knights of the realm, royal knights, pegasus knights, and then pe royal pegasus knights and royal hippogriff knights all are um, knight units, so we don't have to pay for that. We are going to do some economy stuff. Specifically, we want to get to water pumps. Each of your regions can sustain an extra peasant unit. The um, reason we want to do that is just so we can have 12 peasants rather than 10 um, helps a lot. We are going to do... I'm actually going to delay the construction of... Actually, no, what the heck, we'll do it anyway. Um, we're going to do growth then. So you'll see... Well, you'll see it when it happens. So let's go. Turn one done. Sorry for a amount of talking in the battle. Hopefully, at least the battle make it entertaining, and if you don't know the game, I've kind of covered how this faction plays. Oh, for our bonuses, we get additional movement range and leadership aura size when attacking. Basically, this is a faction that just charges. Okay, so this is what I was remarking about. Greenskinned and Unpleasant Land. We have a penalty here as Bretonia. Greenskins encourage to control negative 20 all provinces. Occupy or raise a Greenskin settlement to counteract this. There's a Greenskin settlement right here. We have no chance of taking it with our starting army and their garrison. We have a pretty good garrison. Instead, we're going to actually do something immensely reckless, and we're going to go for Marienburg. I am going to save before then, because that could kill us. Also, I'm on hard difficulty. The Herald's campaign was on the north. I didn't up the battle difficulty, though. So let's give this a shot. We are going to just attack it instantly because we have catapults so we can blast our way through their walls and then things are going to get tricky <laughs> uh yeah we're gonna have to be relatively clever about this if we can get within the walls we can win um we can just sail our pegasus knights honestly right over their walls um but we can't land on the walls with knights so it's a little bit harder than i would like so we have to deploy our troops first because we're the attackers. So the defenders get to see what we're doing. Um, these guys are armored and shielded. So actually these guys are not um, that bad to have in range. But what we want to do is find a part to blast our way through. Um, I suppose the gate is the easiest, isn't it? Um, how far back can we... Pretty far back, can't we? Um, we don't really want to move too far back. We just want to be outside of the range of the towers to some degree. Um, remember, peasant units are expendable. So we want to make sure we have them up front. Okay, Lewin is here. He's actually not... We want to make sure he doesn't take damage, honestly. 
our peasants, archers, we don't really want them up front. We'd much rather have them kill off our spearmen. Here we go. Hopefully this works. Um... I think Lewin can technically attack the gate, can he? Send him forward. Eight, uh, ten damage. Uh, why can't you fire? Oh, messed that up. I messed it up. They, they can't fire because they're in their other regiment, which is stupid. Send Lewin forward. Once he gets to the gate, he should, by and large, be undamageable by the towers. Or by the archer units. Yeah, there we go. He should be safe now. And he will attack the gate. The catapults will fire. I assume both at the gate. Did I order that? Might not have. Okay. 24, 36. The issue is going to be the Halibarters. They are really good against Calvary. They're one of the best Empire units. I'm casually just sitting here letting my peasant units just get shredded by towers. Let's speed this up since we're basically just going to wait till we break down this gate before we do anything else. Although I suppose I could march my archers forward and shoot their archers. Archers don't matter too much. Okay, the gate has been broken. Okay. And they immediately have a rank of halibarters there waiting for us. Okay, time to send in our spearmen. Time to change these guys to shoot everything on the walls, basically. And then let's send our Pegasus Knights into their town there. Wait, that's not the Pegasus Knight. These are the Pegasus, Pegasus Knights. My bad. Um, why are you unable to shoot? You shouldn't be obstructed by anything. I should probably make Lewin face the, them so he doesn't take the damage. We really have no incentive to engage until we do as much damage as we can with our knight units. Okay, these guys have technically made it into the enemy town. They can't take this settlement on this area on their own, but they don't really have to. Okay, let's send in our knights at least behind the walls. After all, our spearmen are about to enter as well. Go yeah, and send Lewin in, and we'll march the damsel up, even though she's not very effective. And we'll send Lewin into these guys. Okay, we've taken the walls. Now it's just, uh, or taken the basic starting area. Actually, we can land on the walls. Interesting. Know that. Okay. Well, we'll attack with flying units on the walls. Uh, where are our cavalry units? Here they come. So, they are... This, our spear units are pretty much dead, but that's expected. Um, let's buff Lewin so he's stronger. Remember, Lewin is an absolute monster in combat. He's probably safe here. He also hits multiple units at the same time. Okay, here come their halibards. Not what I want to see, but oh well. Okay, the towers are basically fallen. Our Pegasus Knights have handled this. Now the key is to land the Pegasus Knights. To attack those guys. As you know, attack those guys. We still want to take the walls first. Then we want to land and take those guys. 
Okay, they've decided to have their lord engage Lewin. Lewin should be able to win that. Our knights here are pinned down, which means we've got to withdraw temporarily. So knights are great until they actually get bogged down in combat. Then they tend to have issues. So you kind of got to run away with them and then re-engage. It's rather frustrating. But it makes sense. Uh, you kill off those guys. You focus on those guys. These guys, their charge bonus is like 90 damage for some 4 or 5 seconds. It's great. We're slowly handling this. March these guys in and take the walls if we can. Lewin's actually struggling a little bit here. If we can drive off this swordsman unit on this side, we're going to be in much better shape. If I can pull them off, then I can move further in my units. Okay, they've fallen. Okay, now the key is to pull these knights through to here. No, no, this way, 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 this way. Desperately ordering them to disengage from the combat. These guys to go there. Lewin smashed their Empire Captain. The knights are mostly out of the battle. Moment. Okay, then we rinse and repeat. These guy, these peasants' units recovered. Okay, we won. There we go. We didn't actually lose any units completely. We took quite a bit of damage. I will allow this continuing slaughter here just to get the XP. And did you see how many kills our uh, Pegasus Knights can pick up? They are monsters. Look at that, 200 some odd kills. Lewin did his fair share. Even our uh, spearmen quitted themselves fairly well. There we go. Victory is ours. Now, the downside is we took some nasty casualties. Which means the greenskins will probably attack the city. <sighs> which could be a real problem, actually. Pyrrhic victory, yeah. Uh, we could sack it, but we'd lose 30 chivalry. We could raise it, but we'd lose 100 chivalry. So we'll just simply take it. So we want to recruit some... Oh, they don't actually have any local military buildings. That's concerning. Uh, let's raise a lord here. I don't think any of these are going to matter right now. Uh, we'll put her in there, because she's got some control. And we want to raise some um, men-at-arms and a bowman. We have 12 peasants we can support now. We have a good amount of income now that we own that. It's a shame that they have no military buildings here. Okay, uh, we do border the Empire now, so can we get a trade agreement? Absolutely not. Uh, non aggression with the vampires. Not the best move, but it'll do for now. No one wants a trade agreement with me, which is very frustrating. Other than the high elves. Okay, uh, let's see what we got. Are we going to get attacked by the greenskins? The odds are probably yes. No, they did not attack us, as a matter of fact. That is good for us. Very good for us. 
Um, we can recruit just one more peasant unit before we go over our limit. Uh, we're going to give Lewin... Oh. Uh, we're going to buff Lewin, I guess. The Marienburg's walls are, in fact, at. Actually, let's cancel that order. We're going to move Leon up and merge him with this army. We have met before. Send her that way. By the light of the lady. Move him into this territory. Up Making to there. Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll have him raise at least one more unit. Now, the odds of the green skin attacking this are reasonably good, which is fine, because we actually want them to. Assuming they're... Oh, they attacked Lewin. Okay, that actually works. We are going to obviously save. And we are going to... I will assume win this battle. Our casualty unit... Our cavalry units have been fully recovered. Lewin's a bit damaged. As is our... Uh, mountain knights. Our flying knights are in good shape, though. So, they are attacking us, which means they have to come to us. They do have a catapult unit, which we will have to make sure to pick off when the time comes. Until the time comes, though, we will hide in the back, basically. Um, let's actually do this slightly differently, because our airmen are injured. And we're going to be fighting greenskins, who are all about charge damage. So, uh, Actually, let's pull these... Back just a bit more. Get our bowmen there. Make sure to always turn off skirmish mode if you do that. Lost quite a few games because of forgetting to turn off skirmish mode. Uh, we'll put Lewin there. Yeah, that'll work. Start deployment. Right now, magic doesn't matter too much for us. Two groups. Okay. Uh, we can technically. I don't think we can hide them because they're flying units. We can hide these guys. So let's put them there. Yeah, that should do it. Okay. Here we go. We are going to obviously send the flying units forward. Because we wish to kill their Doom Diver catapult. Basically as soon as possible. They have two ranged units and their hero is a sword infantry so we really are not that worried about their range it's their infantry that's really the problem uh, actually to some degree ignore the um, archers the archers are not the problem <laughs> the sword boy orc boys the sword infantry that are the issue don't we look so glorious flying right over them all They were actually shooting us with the catapult, which is kind of funny. And that should be the end of the Doom Diver catapult. Leave them on it just a little longer. See if we can get a shattered, because we do not want them to return. The best thing about this fight is they do not have any spearmen, which means we can actually move these knights up a bit and get prepared to engage on them. We have, in fact, shattered the Doom Diver catapult. Good. And interestingly enough, they're chasing us with infantry units, which we'll just fly away from. How are trebuchets doing? Killed off 40 units. Doing pretty good. The AI really doesn't know what to do here. I mean, the AI is not on hard. So. Or hard battles, rather. There's a difference between hard campaign and hard battle. Okay, we're going to send these guys after the archers now. These guys are just milling around aimlessly, which is weird. We are going to... Yeah, I think we're going to charge with Lewin on their lord. 
It's worth charging here. Look at that damage. Ridiculously good. We just gotta make sure our knights don't get pinned down for long in combat. Once their charge bonus wears off, we have to get them out of there. Thankfully, we routed both of them so we can run. Uh, let's have Lewin uh, be buff. There we go. Buffing Lewin is almost always a smart move. Pegasus Knights are doing quite well. Let's turn around and charge again. You there, you there. Lewin has routed their general. Let's break our defensive wall here since we kind of won at the moment. No. Lewin killed their lord, which is great. We routed both of those guys, so we'll send them there. It's going to be a reasonably easy battle. Lewin having physical resistance is just great. Very strong with it. Okay, these guys are taking out. These guys, these guys are just, look at the leadership. Because they've lost already, which means we just walk up and kill everything. It's great. I do have some complaints with the Total War series, but I do like how they do morale in these games. Obviously, I'm going to try and take out as many of them as I can, seeing as uh, we want to take that settlement they were living in. That's probably enough now. Got a couple hundred on each of our main cavalry units. Even our catapults, look at that. 140. They did a good job. They definitely decimated some of the orc ranks before we engaged. We only lost 28 units. I mean... Right now, when everybody has basic starting units, and Britonia has four mid-level, uh, two mid-level cavalry and two high-level cavalry, the advantage is definitely on our side. Okay, so we've gained the Blessing of the Lady. So this is another Britonia mechanic. The blessing of the Lady, plus 20 physical resistance to our entire army. Ability will be lost if the army retreats. I believe it's also if we lose a battle. It's really good. Uh, we're going to do Thunderbolt, so we actually have magic. We're going to finish this guy off. Execute them. Uh, can we... We can make it to their city, so we're going to do that. We're going to give Lewin uh, hard to hit. Make him a little bit harder to kill. Oh, we can actually upgrade this lady too. Again. Easy victory, so I'm just going to auto-resolve it. Get more casualties than we would if I commanded it. The lady uh, we will occupy the settlement. We're going to probably be fighting a lot of greenskins or rebellions there, but for now, we'll own it. Uh, let's give everyone in our army five leadership, because why not? More magic. And we have gotten rid of that huge control penalty due to taking a greenskin settlement. Which means our capital is relatively safe. So let's actually swap this to construction cost. And then we'll probably do one more turn and then we'll stop for the first episode. I know we've only gotten through a couple, but I did do two battles. Three battles, actually. Boy, that bird is tired. It's just flying in circles. There isn't a bird, that's a pegasus. 
If we look closer, that's a Pegasi. That it's just casually flying over the mountain range. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so part of the issue is corruption. So let's turn off taxes. That'll help a little bit. Okay, so I did the 10% cheaper cost, so everything will be much cheaper. Exactly what we want. Blue windmill, and we will upgrade this so that we can get men at arms and spear men at arms with shields. Can't say they're that great, but with shields, um, they can at least tank tower shot uh, shots from siege towers better. We can also raise some more uh, infantry units, which for the time being, um, we will. We are at war with factions up here, by the way, so we do have to be aware that we can get invaded at any time. Uh, and then we'll just process, and that will be it. Five turns, three battles, two settlements gained. Not bad for first episode. Um, if anyone has any advice for playing this faction or things they want to see, by all means let me know. Um, I'm not an absolute expert at the game, but I'm not bad. So, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.